before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called the Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. I am so excited because I've got one of my really good friends on air and off air, Shanti, <laughs> my South African queen, um, on my channel today. I filmed so much with you on your channel that I forget to get you over on mine, Shanti. How are you this morning? Well, it's afternoon or evening for me already. Um, yeah. It's been a great day so far. Thank you. I started off having a lovely swim in the ocean again, and it's chilly and cold and just love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's getting winter here now, so, but it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. How are you, beautiful? Are I'm you good? good. It is raining here in Atlanta, Georgia. This We're filming this on Friday, even though I know it's going to air. I was telling Shanti it's going to air next Who's there? week. Yeah, we are filming it on March 1, so we're in March now, and it is raining. But it's punch for the beginning of the month. I know. Well, I actually, it's, this, the rain today actually kind of nice to me. You know, sometimes when it's raining, it's annoying, but it feels very calming today, like the rain that we're having in Georgia. And, um, yeah, so we need it, though. We need it. And, um, yeah, so so I, I know i got to go to the grocery store later in the rain, but that's okay. That's okay. We need it. It's calm. Yeah, awesome. The dog's calm. My boyfriend's calm. It just feels like a very relaxing rainy day. So I hope for those of you in the rain south, is a good day. Yeah, I hope you guys experiencing the rain in the south. Either having that same that same kind of just mellow, just chill at home, cozy <laughs> um, rain. So exactly. Now, I was telling you before you started filming. This is definitely a conversation that I think we've needed to have for a while because out of everybody yeah. on our little corner of the internet, I think you and you and I have gotten probably bullied the most, wouldn't you say? Yeah. I would, I mean, I can't compare myself to anyone else because I don't really know. Well, I mean, I have to say, uh, Jesse gets bullied horrifically. Um, I mean, that poor lady, what she goes through um, is on another level, uh, definitely. And of course, yeah, I know. Um, and purely because I... Uh, have her on my show and have had for over three years now. She's obviously, as you guys know, has been a regular guest, um, as well as um, you know other other guests as well. But she's obviously high level, yeah. Um, and because she was trained for for the position that she was, she is targeted hugely. Um, and as I say, for that reason, yes, I am certainly on their on their. Um, in their sites as well. Um, but also because, I mean, you know, Bryce, you and I have very similar viewpoints on life, on spirituality, on stuff like that. So just by the mere, for the mere fact that we believe different things, and it's really not that different at the end of the day, it's actually very much the same, just looking through a different lens, but it's pretty much, you know, seeing the same thing and coming from the same source right yeah. but um i think you know you we've been gifted with being open-minded mm -hmm. um and i thank god every day for that gift because i really do enjoy the fact that i am open-minded um, and can see things in a different way but many people and it'll it never stops 
surprising me. Um, many religious people, and I'm not talking about believers because there's a difference between a believer mm -hmm. and a religious nut. You know, I always say God requires spiritual fruit, not religious nuts, right? So uh, you get these religious nuts who I don't know how they can correlate the teachings of Christ mm -hmm. to the way they apply Their because behavior. that is so not Christ-like in so many ways. I mean, I've been through, yep. I can't tell you how many times recently, again, this past week, I've, I've, I've been through disgusting memes made of myself, um, uh, just insults, um, you know, ridiculous things. And I, Like I get told I'm wearing a scarf because I'm hiding my Adam's apple. I have no Adam's apple. No, you're you know, no. They I, love no. telling me I'm a male. You're no. <laughs> I don't know, you know, because you're a tall, strong woman, does that make me a male? No, Listen, I had somebody call me head. a male too. And literally, like, if you look at my butt, I mean, it's ridiculous. It's it's this. But I think what it is, Shanti, and I, I talk, I you know, you and I both have a very strong belief in a, a working relationship with the creator, whether you want to call that God, we both are very, we both lead our lives. We lead our lives with our spiritual practices. And I've over the, however many years we've been filming together and become friends. That's something that you and I very much have in common that we do lead our lives with spiritual, spiritual principles. And I'm always looking towards mm -hmm. God. If we want to call it God, whatever you want to, you know, call that the, 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 the God, the creator, for a reason and for and, and that faith that everything happens as it's supposed to as ordained by our creator and so the fact that you and i get have such strong beliefs in god and yet we get attacked the most by christians is quite baffling to me and i i wanted to really I, you know i have gotten i've never been by a hindu i've never been by a buddhist i've never been thrown by a muslim i've never been by an atheist but right. i have piles of emails of literal sent to me by christians and very very uh, frequently we'll be in a live show together shanti talking about something sometimes completely off talk a research project off topic of spirituality and we get the christians in the chat that want to berate us And immediately, mm. and, and, and I, I just, at some point, enough is enough. And I, I wanted to bring you on to, to really, I mean, I don't really know what the answer is, but this bad behavior, I titled this, this show Christians Behaving Badly, because I have great love for the Christ. I have great love for Yeshua. I have great love for, for right. his teachings. And I don't see his teachings in the christians today i don't i see more satan which right. if we if we talk about the research that i've done into the dionysian cult all that kind of stuff yes it is satanic so we're seeing the fruits of this almost satanic teaching coming out in the and the threats that you and i receive we're not arguing that the, we we love god we're, we're and i've said before shanti because my faith is in god and not in religion i'm able to look at the missing books of the Bible. I'm able to be, oh, as you said, open-minded to other people's beliefs and hear other people's beliefs out because my faith is not in religion. You know, what's when exactly. I say it's, it's a religious person is a, is a, afraid of hell. Um, a spiritual person is a person who's been to hell and back again. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. So we've been there. We've come back. We know what it's about. There's nothing to fear except fear itself, you know. And again, I'm gonna I'm gonna quote Gandhi, yeah, who says, "I really love your Christ, but I do not like your Christians, for they are so unlike your Christ." And and in a in a in a very large way, that is that is um, it's so true. And I don't again, you know, like you say, you know, and and we both chatted about not wanting to be judgmental and um, combative in this discussion, because that's not my intention at all. I don't like to be judgmental of other people and what they do and how they do it. But there are times where I have to say I lose my, sh my I lose my cool when I see, you know, it's like when, 
we'll be doing chats. And then, I mean, not too long ago, I mean, when I was interviewing Caleb and I had a rant on Airboy, uh, someone said, well, this show is not Christian enough for me. I was like, Ugh. you know, it was just one of those days where I just, I just flip and I put down and I said, excuse me. And for about five minutes, I just said my say, you know, it's like, what is not being Christian enough? You know, the fact that I do not read my Bible in the way that you do, but yet I work with people all day. Um, I can, I mean, I, I work with SRA survivors. Mm -hmm. Most, in fact, all of them free of charge. I don't charge for my time as far as that's concerned. I, you know, I come onto this platform because I care very deeply. Yeah. Um, I have courage. I have strength. I'm not fearful. Um, I am, you know, again, last week I had a th uh, come my way uh, telling me accidents happen amongst other things. Um, I mean, it never ceases to amaze me that people will go to those lengths. And, you know, Bryce, it's, it's very simple for me. There are believers and there are those Christian people who are open-minded and loving and kind. And, and I, they, I want to say, I meant to say that we're, we're not talking about all Christians. We understand right, that there yeah. are incredible Christians in our audience who are very supportive of our discussions and like learning. We're not talking, right. we're talking about the violent ones. We're talking about the ones right. that have, and I think Shanti, I don't even think our audience knows probably 70% of the stuff that we've been through offline because of the Christians. Um, the, the, the times I've, I've talked about going to the police for some occasions, but there have been times I've had to go to the police that I've gotten very serious from Christians. Um, I've had male fundamentalist Christians contact me as a female commanding me. I thought it, one, one email was funny because he was like, I command you to shut down your channel as your authority as a male, LOL. How did that work out for you, dude? You know, but I've also gotten other very serious emails from men in the Christian community harm upon me, like old Testament style treatments because i'm a woman who's challenging their patriarchy you know and and that's and that's very scary and so i've had to you know go to the authorities in order to have a paper trail in case something does happen to me because of a christian and my thing shanti like and this is what i, I and I, we, you and i were not trying to be combative we're really trying to have an open and honest and loving conversation because what what was christ Christ, his two laws were what? Love each other as I have loved you. Lo love your love thy God with all thy heart and love each other as I have loved you. Okay, yes. And that's exactly. how you practice your life, Shanti. That's how I practice my life too. Off camera. Yeah, I'm, I'm like you, Shanti. I'm feisty. I'm I'm not a coward. I'm brave. I like to speak my mind, but I'm also a very loving person and I give a lot of myself to a lot of people. I'm, yeah. you know, in India, I'm in the gutters, pulling puppies out of the gutters. I'm, I'm, I started a foundation all on my own to try to help children in India. Like I am there. And, and so I, I'm looking at this and I'm looking at the two rules that Christ gave love thy God with all, all your heart and love each other as I have loved you. And that is not what I'm seeing coming from these combat, these, these violent Christians. I'm seeing the exact opposite. I wouldn't even, you know, the thing is for me, it's like uh, interesting. I was having uh, this morning, um, I want to highly recommend that, that that the viewers watch my interview with Kerry Saint. I mean, Kerry Saint's amazing. We're talking, you know, uh, this morning, and it's gonna the the the, the series is gonna come in more than one part because it's really about um, what is the mark of the beast. It's not a chip. It's actually like the Sunday law, and she's gone into the whole biblical teachings of what the AC is, the Antichrist is, and how it's gone through the churches, etc. And of course, it's the Vatican and the Catholic yeah. Church, but how they bring in yep. all the other churches in to be part of this whole thing. And, you know, she quotes that. So I've been saying for a long time, the church is the infiltrator, right? They, they've used the church mm -hmm. as to infiltrate 
humans, to get to humans and to brainwash them. So in many ways, the Bible that the average person is reading is flawed. Oh, absolutely. Well, it was and it has by, nothing to do with God. No, yes. it was written by the, and, and we talked about this on your channel a while ago, Shanti. The Bible we have today was written by the Freemasons mm. under mm. the direction of King James. And I, and, and people, I, there was a video a couple of, of weeks ago I did where I talked about, you know, King James was, was a, a openly and openly was a Satanist. Yeah. And someone got real upset. And on the comment section, I was like, I can't have on my channel people who openly support because that's what you're doing you think yeah. Epstein was bad you ain't seen exactly you got to go back and look and look at what happened way back then yeah and that's the thing so so many people have been brainwashed into believing what they believe yeah. and it's like they taught and they can paraphrase that Bible baby in a, in, in a way that, I mean, they can quote every Bible verse. But, you know, my point is, if you are throwing your Bible verses at me, then I'm not interested in having a conversation with you because it's telling me two things. A, you have not integrated the teachings of that yet. Apply the teachings of Christ. Apply them to your life because then the Bible comes alive within you. You start living, you start walking your talk, you start acting in a more Jesus-like way, you start acting in a more God-like way, you, you, you belong to God and you know that, and you wouldn't want to hurt another person or another uh, creature in the same way that you know God does not want to hurt others. I'm always coming under fire <clears throat> for <clears throat> talking about the slaughter industry being the biggest mm -hmm. satanic or blood ritual 100%. on this planet every yeah. single day. Mm -hmm. There are billions of animals slaughtered every single day in the most traumatizing way ever. And yet you have these Christian Christians that walk around eating meat and defending their right to eat it without knowing how that animal lived, what's been put into its body, how it came to its end and how it landed on your plate. You get these Christians walking around big fat bragging about shooting bears and hunting now there is such a contradiction in that for me because there's no ways jesus would want that now jesus understood or yeshua understood what humans were so he met us on that level and there's a whole, you know, we can talk about the crucifixion because as well, he met us on that level. He knew what human beings needed to learn, right? And the same thing, well, Jesus ate fish. No, no Jesus did not eat fish. Uh, he, yeah. But he understood that human beings needed to eat fish. So well, he manifested Bible, fish for them. In the, in, the, in the missing books of the Bible, that's a, that's a corruption of the Bible. In the missing books of the Bible, he is very clear very yeah. crystal clear that if you are to follow his teachings then you abstain from eating meat and the, exactly. the scene on on the mount when he when he multiplies the fish and bread well in the real the original text it's fruit it's grapes it was grapes and bread fruit. and he tells, makes sense that it was grapes yeah yeah he, but so, i'm quite okay with the christians thinking it was fish yeah because at the same time he, you know he understood what humans needed at the time, and he was not judgmental. Right. That's what I'm saying. So he understood. So he therefore then manifested the fish, mm -hmm. right? And or I would definitely more go with grapes, yeah. <laughs> or fruit. But, <clears throat> you know, my point is, is that there's no ways the God I serve does not judge me. Mm -mm. is not angry, does not want to make me feel guilty for what the things I've done and said, right? I'm born into this life and I'm created in the image of God in my own unique shanti way. And I'm, I always say I'm God's favorite F-bomb child. <laughs> I'll throw F-bombs here, there and everywhere. I'm not saying it's the ideal thing, but that certainly does not exclude me from being a warrior for my creator because i certainly am that now am i perfect no do i fuck up every day 
Absolutely. And I'm okay with that. I've learned how to not judge myself for things like that and not to feel guilty for things I did 20 or 30 or 40 years ago, right? When I was in a different place. So if I screw up, I will do my best to change it. If I need to apologize, I will apologize. You know, that for me is your repentance, you know? Yeah. And I will often ask myself in a troubled situation, what would Yeshua do now? Right. And then I will sit and I will act in that way. Now, does that make me think I'm God or Jesus? or No. It just makes me realize that I choose to live my life in that way. I do not need to be Bible bashing anyone. I do not need to be hurling Bible verses at you. Come and sit and talk to me, human to human. Come and talk to me without all this crap with which you think you've taken so literally. You know, your Bible being your shield does not mean that you now sit and hurl all those Bible verses at people. It literally means you've understood the words, you've integrated them into your being, and you are living them. Yeah. You are living them and through every day, you, your actions will show you what you are living and how you are living. And that for me is what it is. And you know what? Do I, <clears throat> do I know my Bible off path? No, I'm not, not at all. But I don't need to. I didn't, I mean, you don't have to be a genius to figure out that the Vatican is head of the Antichrist system. Right. Right. Now, how I get there, the Bible explains that beautifully, as Kerry Saint did in her, in her show with me it's today. The Gospel but of Judas. Me, I knew it a long it. time ago. It's like, duh. Yeah. The Gospel of Judas, um, which was one of the missing books, takes you from point A to point B and explains how the church is going to become corrupted mm. and how it will become that which the Christians hate. They will become that. That is what the Gospel of Judas, when I covered it, I was like, damn, they are like, on fire with this one. But let me tell you too, but one thing too, Shanti is like, I know for myself as someone who's very open-minded, I have a lot, I don't believe in a God that would, I I'm not narcissistic enough to believe that my belief system is the only belief system that's going to exactly. into heaven. I'm not that narcissistic or psychopathic. I could see beauty. I see God everywhere in multiple right. different cultures and faiths. So, but here's the thing, Shanti too, is that, I think for me, especially, I'm so comfortable and confident in what I believe in my own relationship, knowing that I respect other people's beliefs too. I have my own opinions that I put on my channel, my research that I put on my channel. I'm a guest on your channel. We talk, we, we share a lot of the same opinions. We look at objectively at the research. I don't seek out though. I don't go on YouTube channels of churches. I don't go on other people's channels that have differing opinions from me and start harassing them, using them and throw them in the comment section. I never do that. I would, I would never do that. I would exactly. never do that to another human being. So why is it? Why I, I've got so much better, more better things to fill exactly. my time and my days with, really. And why is it, the Shanti, other people? That why do you think it is that these fundamentalist, violent, we'll call it what it is, violent Christians feel the need to come onto my channel and your channel and hurl towards us if they don't agree with what we're saying? Don't watch, don't watch the show. And especially, it's very simple to me. It's very simple to me, Bryce. Sorry to interject there. It's very simple. It's like they, because they're often so brainwashed, these religious nuts, it's impossible for them to reflect on their own actions. They honestly and truly believe that they have to go out there and persecute anyone who's not in their eyes or what they've been taught uh, doing what Jesus told us to do. That's the problem. They've never, they're not looking at themselves. It's so hard for them to actually do introspection and their own shadow work. They are waiting. They've yeah. given their power away because they are waiting for this external savior to come and save them. And I'm not saying we're not going to help. We don't have external help, but we, A, 
have to be open to receiving that help and realize we've got to align ourselves with that help because that help comes to us in the form of inspiration, in, in, in action. What am I going to do now? Boom, act in that way. Moving, uh, dodging a bullet, stepping out of the way of the bullet at the right time. Not because some spaceship is carrying you off or you've now been, you know, whatever the, you know, however and, God is going to do, I think nature in many ways will take care of, you know, I, we'll probably have some more natural disasters, <laughs> in my opinion, if anything, that, that'll swallow up a lot of these creatures of the night and, you know, what, whatever. I mean, I don't yeah. know. I don't think about it in that way. I just think about how we can for ourselves change the current events because we have to learn how to empower ourselves and jesus taught us how to save ourselves you know i was doing an interview with jerry marzinski not too long ago and he's an incredible guy um you know he figured out that schizophrenia is not voices in the head but it really is entities that have attached themselves to people and they are demonic entities and caleb jade will speak about how they do that using soul batteries and stuff how they actually literally take that person's soul and they use it as a battery right and he talks about especially the 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 the, the mental institutions and prisons being two of the greatest places where they do that. And then these demonic entities literally take over and your thoughts then become, but you can only do that if you are open. Right. If you've opened yourself up right. to doing that. Somewhere along the line, you had to have given permission consciously or unconsciously for this stuff to happen. I mean, on, on one of the last shows I had, I had a barrage of people telling Jerry Marzinski because he does the mace, mace energy method which is amazing because I'm actually looking into doing that. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Um, so, and you, and, and, and they were saying, well, all you got to do is you got to pray in Jesus name and this. And I'm sitting there and I wanted to take these people and literally shake them until some of their teeth rattled because a, if all it took was prayer in Jesus name, why is every Christian not walking on water? And why we want to be in the state that we're in. And I, that pisses me off too, Sean. Do you think about all the children that are going through the, that we know, do you really don't think those kids are shouting out in Jesus name? How dare you? Exactly. How dare you be that evil? That sorry, that fucking evil. Short sighted. Yes. Yeah, arrogant. exactly. How f that, that makes me so mad. I, I will block people who say that because I'm like, this is not, sorry, I'm getting red because I think about all the children that have been horrifically hurt. And you're arrogant exactly. enough to think that you know the magic words. How funny that the church taught you that. How funny that the bad guy taught you that's what works. Exactly. Common sense, my friends. Common fucking sense. And it's it's so true because really at the end of the day, you know, when we look at the human being, and I'm gonna go, and I say this again, as a healer, I've healed myself from life threatening diseases. I've walked people through healing themselves from life-threatening diseases, physically, emotionally, mentally. Um, and also there have been those that have not lived because that they've chosen to cross over. And I respect that, right? But the human being is made up of four. Spiritual, emotional, mental, physical. Prayer and faith. Yes, I do agree. Faith over fear. That's the first leg. Mm -hmm. So if that's all it took... As I said, why are the mental institutions not empty? Why are the prisons not empty? Why is every child that's being set not being set free, right? Why have all these things continued to happen? And yet the arrogance, as you say, of people throwing this kind of BS at us, every Christian should be freaking walking on water. Why yeah. do you still go to the dentist as a Christian? Why do you still go to the doctor? Why do you take meds? Why are you on, 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 why are you PTSD? Why are all, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not judging. I'm observing. There's a big difference. Yeah. And I, I, yeah, I, said, I said the same thing. If you know somebody, if you know somebody is going through spiritual warfare and you tell them, Oh, just pray in Jesus name. But if you found out someone had cancer, would you say the same thing to them? No, you wouldn't, because you know you're going to need medical intervention or whatever healing, whatever type of, he of help that person is going through. But but yet for a spiritual issue, you're going 
if, if, if it was that simple, we would not be in the war that we're in right now. If it was that easy to bippity bop your way out. The first step is to pray, pray and have faith, have that alignment. Mm -hmm. Then that alignment, okay, gets your inner being to understand that you're aligned with God and you have the power within you to resurrect or heal your own body, that your body is designed to heal itself. So then that's the first thing. Once you've aligned and understood that, the, the spirit unlocks that consciousness in you that says it's very possible, but you now have to go and look at all the blocks in your life, all the blind spots that have stopped you from seeing this to begin with. That's where the shadow work begins on an emotional level. Emotions are water, right? That's the yep. water element. The first is the fire or the spirit is the fire element. It's like that match going on and suddenly lighting that fire where you or the light where you can see what you need to see. Now you're either going to sit in the room and shiver and go, well, God's coming to save me. I'm not moving or whatever. Or you're going to say, hey, there's a door. I'm getting out of here. Yeah. You know, and then you're going to find the route that takes you to where you need to be. So then, you know, healing resides within the cells of your body. And that's the emotional healing. That's your fuel. So then you start unlocking, you start seeing the things that have stopped you from healing, that have blocked you, right? So then we start working on that level. So we unblock, we unlock, we unleash all the stuff that has stopped you. That's step two. Step three then would be into the third eye, the mental capacity, where now you suddenly, boom, wow, I see things differently. My perception around this stuff is changing. My eyes are open, my ears are open, my heart is open. I realize things about myself that I've never realized before. I see the confidence, I see the inner power, and power is not big muscles and beating someone with a sword. Power is generosity, confidence, kindness, all of that. And once you've understood that, then the healing moves into leg number four, which is the physical healing in the body. Then you can raise your frequency. We all know we created from sound frequency and vibration. And then you can raise your frequency above these low munching entities and energies, right? You raise your frequency. You now understand you can, your body is designed to heal itself. So you know what to do. Uh, so you first, you first got to be it. Then you're going to do it. Then you're going to have it. You're not going to do it first, have it then, and then be it. We've got it all back to front and confused. So that's what we need to understand. Prayer is but step one. It is but step one. And if it were that simple, every Christian would be walking on water. So seriously, it's like, to me, the, the narrow-mindedness and the arrogance around this, and then we get called New Age witches, right, when we, when we start talking about these things. The narrow-mindedness and the arrogance around this is actually – soul destroying not for me but yeah. for them it's it's funny you said new age i'm like literally this is the exact same thing that jesus or yashua spoke about like so if you call if you're calling us a witch you're also calling him a witch too because this is exactly <laughs> what he talked about and if you read the missing books of the bible and that's the thing too this is what it gets me too shanti is a lot of the people that watch our shows that are and again i want to reiterate we're not talking about the lovely, there are some lovely Christians in our audience. Yeah, there are so many, and they know that totally, I love you all. You guys know who you are. They resonate with what what we're saying. They're they're great. They really understand. They're great. They know the church is corrupt. They're willing to look at their own religion and say, "Yeah, it's corrupt." But I'm, you know, I that I, I, we're not. We're talking about these very violent people that come after us and just trying to have a conversation about it. And here's the thing that gets me, like, sits me, like, scratching my head. These people, the violent ones, the bullies know that everything in our world is corrupt. They know every asset, every corner of the world we live in has been corrupted. But yet, when you bring up the, not the opinion, but the fact that the Christians yes. wrote the Bible with King James, they freak out at you and they they call you names and they, they claim, 
and and I feel I find myself saying the same thing that I say to people on the other side of this global situation that your feelings aren't facts, honey. Your feelings are yeah. facts. facts are facts. It does. You, fa yes, the group exactly. Doesn't care about your opinion. The the fact that the the fact the actual fact that the Freemasons wrote the Bible with King James in order to obliterate the other texts that were out there to control the masses. That's a fact. It doesn't, yes. that doesn't care how you feel about it. It doesn't care about right. the things. And then my next question would be, why does that trigger you? Is your faith in the book, this book, or is your faith in God? Exactly. Because your faith lies in God? Learning that this book was written by the people you didn't think it was written by is might piss you off a little bit, but it's not going to trigger you this much because your faith exactly. is not in this book. It's in something bigger. God is not limited to a book. You Far know? from. I love that. God is not limited to a book. We should have T-shirts made. Yeah. Let's say that. You know, I get I get pushed back when I started going through the missing books of the Bible. That's when I really started getting threatened. And I would have people email me all the time being like, well, really smart men have told us that these books are bad. I'm like, so you support censorship? Yeah, exactly. Because really exactly. smart men have told us to get the <laughs> Zapperty Doodahs too. What do you think? Yeah. What do you think? Why don't you read? It's just a book. Read it. Nothing's going to happen to you. You just read it. Read it from an academic exactly. perspective. But how clever of these group of controllers. You know, Christianity is one of the biggest religions in the world. You don't think it's compromised? <laughs> it is the biggest religion in the world. And I mean, it's the only religion that has so many bloody demons. Yeah, and well, really, absolutely. absolutely. So no, it's small wonder. I mean, you know, the more you're going to be hovering around with the demons, the more you, you know, they uh, like whatever guy, you know. I mean, yeah. serious. Yeah. I mean, so, where, so my question, and this is to you, Shanti, and I can't wait to see what our lovely audience that understands where we're coming from. If you get abusive in the comment section, I'll just block you. But, um, but for where do we go from here? How do we change course correct this? How do we deal with the bullies? Because I know a lot of our audience deal with it as well. Even our audience members who don't have youtube channels but are in the christian faith but have more of an open-minded perspective to perspective to christianity i know they deal with this harassment as well so so where, what do you think our solution is shanti like what where how do we find commonality with that with our bullies at Bryce, for me it's very simple i ignore 95 percent of it you know i mean i honestly uh every i don't even engage with them mostly if there's something that that I really feel I need to engage with, then I'll engage with it, you know. I mean, <clears throat> there are times where I respond to people, and yeah. Um, but to be perfectly honest, I know who I am. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm about. I have always been targeted because of what I represent and the gifts I have and, you know, living in a very conservative community. So for me, I've always had kind of like a bit of a target on my back. So I think from a young, young age already, I've learned how to deal with a lot of that on this platform, unless it's really serious, I just mostly, I just block them. Um, and I just move, move forward. I can't control how somebody else thinks. That's up to them to figure out the right way. But all I can say to people, and you know, and this is why we do lots of like, that's why I have solutions with Shanti, because it's like, that's the healing aspect. So when you are, if you, for me, it's a no brainer. If you are part of the, 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 the team that targets somebody, that tells them how bad and how evil they are, et cetera, and, and, and sends terrible memes around about them or uh, threatens like a man. I'm a man and I'm telling you from whatever, you know. If you are doing that, you know, and this is why I say invite yourself to actually say, what would Jesus do now? Would Jesus be bullying people? Would Jesus be persecuting? In fact, he'd be doing the opposite. So 
That's the way I deal with it mostly. 80%, 89, 80, 90%. I don't even know it goes on. I'm told people tell me there's stuff going on, like whatever, as long as they're having fun. You know, um, I, I just honestly, mostly don't even engage. There are times where I do engage and sometimes I have a very sharp tongue. Um, you know, I mean, I'm, you know, because our channel has been shadow banned, they often remove comments. So I get hurled yeah. abuse at because they tell me I'm removing comments. So anytime yeah. I remove yeah. comments, yeah, the only time I remove comments is if they're Mm -hmm. and especially to my visitors or my guests right then you but then chances are you're going to be blocked and then i get accused of removing comments and you know i get accused of the most crazy things mostly i just block the people and remove because it's my right to do so and it, I, I just don't feel like having that energy on my channel Absolutely. There's millions of people out there. Uh, my channel is not that big. It's growing all the time because I've been struck so many times and I'm okay with that. The right people will see what they need to see. And, you know, we just carry on. Mm -hmm. So that's my point. You know, if people want to do that, then it's on them. Um, and that, oh, that's what I said to the person that threatened me. I said, you do understand that whatever comes out of your mouth uh, when it uh, is a spell casting, and will be returned to you tenfold. Not because I'm th I'm threatening you. That is just the way just that the it mess. is. That's the and, You yeah. know, and that's one thing Caleb was telling us. You know, your teeth are appetite crystals, and appetite crystals will magnify things hugely. So your words, your the the spelling, your ideas, whatever it is, intentions that come out of you um, are magnified. And I am protected. There's no doubt in my mind. I've, God has shown me plenty of times how protected I am. They'll now try and come for me in my dreams. You must see, you know, often mm -hmm. there's, there's a, an attempt on me in my dreams. And I, I'm always a few steps ahead, always. And I choose to be that, you know. Um, and I know that I am that. But I didn't just get there. I earned that place by understanding God's teachings in many ways and understanding what it is. And as you say, I don't profess to know everything. Um, I'm not stupid enough to think that everyone has to believe the way that I believe. People will believe in the way that they believe, and that will be a good thing for them. I choose what I believe, and that works for me. Um, do I get tripped up every now and again? Yes. Do I get mad at people every now and again? Yes, absolutely. But at the end of the day, it's my path, my journey. There are, we have human traits. We are, all have human conditions. It's up to us how we navigate them. Am I deceived? Am I betrayed? Yes, I am, you know. Um, but that's also because I've chosen not to see the truth when I should have seen it. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to choose, you know, if I'm, I'm going to choose to turn a blind eye five or ten years ago, well, I'm paying the price for it now, aren't I? Yeah. And at the end of the day, that's the way it is for me. I look at things like that. Is it easy? No, not all the time. But, you know, I take responsibility for my life. I choose to take responsibility. I choose to carry on doing what I know I need to do. I pray. I meditate. I take time with God. I do what I need to. And I am okay with who I am at the end of the day. And I think, Bryce, if more people had that, because I've been teaching this for many years in my workshops and with my students and stuff, and those of us who do that see the results. Yeah. doesn't make life eternal easy surf not at all you're going to get dumped you're going to have to pick up you're going to find your hard. surfboard yes yeah you're going to have to dodge a shark or two or ten <laughs> yeah well the thing too is shanti is like as you're saying that i'm sitting here thinking too like i think you know common sense you know you and i have youtube channels where we discuss the things we want to discuss and we go through our research and we give our opinions and we have guests that come on and give their opinions and even though i'm the same person off of youtube than i am on youtube as well but off of youtube i'm not walking around standing on the corner of the park preaching what i believe 
you know, like, yeah, exactly. and I think people have this perception that just because we come on YouTube, we're like, this is, you know, we're, we're, every, we're in the middle of the grocery store talking about the missing books, of the Bible. No, you know, like in, in my life. And, and I, I will say, I have gotten that message of emails from people like, how do I talk to my friends and family about this? And I always, I always give the same advice. I'm like, just start with the, the, the softball stuff. Like, don't go in hard. Don't go in like, Jesus wasn't really crucified. You know, that's the big one. Start with like the, the softball stuff. Like, Hey, you know, there's these missing books. They're kind of interesting. You know, like don't, don't just because we go there mm -hmm. on YouTube on our channels does not mean that that's what we're doing. We're coming in that hard on our lives. Does that make sense? Like there's tons of churches on Peach Street Street up here, which is one of the main streets in Atlanta. And we walk up and down this street all the time. I walk past all these churches all the time. Half the time I'm, I'm admiring how beautiful they are. I'm not stopping the parishioners going into church to, to no, I'm, I'm not doing that, you know, like, so I think there has to be some recognition um, that is as human beings, what, how, what, when we come on YouTube, listen, if you, if I was a reality show and you got to watch me 90% of my day, you'd be bored out of your mind. You'd be bored out of your effing. I'm the same. <laughs> you can dig it out. I'm sure that probably had tried I'm already trying to do some digging on me. So it must be really bored. Oh, so bored. I mean, half the time when I'm not filming, I'm sitting here studying, basically, researching. That's not fun to watch. Or I'm out walking my dog. Or I'm I'm, I'm figuring out my class I'm going to teach. Like, it's not exciting. So the most of our personalities come out on our shows, you yeah. know. And, and, and so I think a lot of people will kind of get that. But, you know, I, I, um, I also think, Shanti, like how ironic it is that the religion that that – proposes to be the most peaceful the most loving has actually been one of the most violent religions and judgmental the very thing yeah the very thing that jesus has taught us not to do is not to judge mm -hmm. and here we go it's the greatest downfall i think of 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 the religious not christian society yeah my friend tamara said once that when people because she gets the same she's like us and she gets the same kind of pushback sometimes and she's like oh i didn't know that god stepped down and allowed you to be the judge you know i didn't know god stepped down i didn't get that memo that you were <laughs> ordained to be to be the judge of who goes where you know and um exactly. it's it's um i will say i don't know if i've ever shared with you with this shanti but when i first started going to india and i opened up my foundation which very small foundation because i long story just got involved in going to the slums and really got to love the people in the slums and trying to help and when i opened my foundation when i came back to the united states and i was doing some fundraising and i was like oh my god like ten dollars will help one child for a whole year you know that's how the rupee dollar exchange rate it's so easy and you know my my goal is to to always use every donation to go into the slums i i have to go to india anyway and i I had two big pushbacks from Christians I know. One Christian said to me verbatim, why would I give money to a bunch of Hindu kids who are going to hell anyway? Talk about wow. gut punch to me. And I thought, well, I'm glad your mask just slipped and I saw you for who you are because I would challenge you to say that to God because God created those little Hindu kids with as just as sure. much love as he created you. And how dare you say that about God's creation? Another person pushed back and said, well, I'll only give you money if you go there and witness the teachings of Jesus to these kids. And I laughed in their face. And I said, what a privileged existence you live. If you think that's the main subject that can be spoken about when you're trying to remove a child from the slums into a safe house because you know they're about to get picked up by some bad people yeah exactly but you want me to pause and talk to them about jesus while i got the slum lords on my back and my life is at stake, at stake as well i have to have when i go into the slums i've learned this i have to have guards with me because i could very easily get pulled deeply into the slums and also right. in trouble. so how privileged and arrogant are you to not be humble enough to realize how blessed you are to live in a country where that's not a threat 90% of the time. Exactly. Now, yeah, in your existence. To have judgmental. Yeah, I mean, very I was judgmental. Horrified. Horrified. And I was like, I don't think that's the same. I don't think that's what Jesus would do.
I think he'd be like, absolutely, let me see what I can do to help you with these kids, get them to safety. And, and, and you know, one thing, Shanti, I, I just got an email the other day. It was like an essay of how this person wants to save me from the new age. And I'm like, well, new age is a, is a term that's created by the three-letter agency, just like conspiracy theorists. So you've already lost me there. Second of all, um, the audacity, seeing that I have spent 18 years of my life learning Sanskrit studying the sutras studying the text and you've obviously never even picked the damn sutras up and read them in english exactly audacity you can't mm. you can't that's the thing a lot of and, and you know i always say people i mean the other day i had someone as well say, uh, pose the question yeah. <laughs> of course it was a q a with caleb <laughs> and she posed the question do people who practice yoga or yoke, as it's called in Sanskrit, are we opening ourselves up to the lower realm, demonic Raphaim entities and gods with a small G? I'm like, please, you know, more people should do yoga. And let me not even start with the double lives that these people live. Yeah. Let me not even start because well, I, mean, I know a few of them who have some seriously double lives and call themselves good Christians. It's and the just missing books gross. of the Bible, Yeshua teaches his disciples yoga. So yeah, I mean, everything that, you okay. judge us for, everything you attack us for are things that Yahshua himself did and taught. So yeah. have, a, have a think about that. And that's the thing, yeah, I mean, okay, well, if, if yoga is doing that to people, then what about dance? What about running? What about What about the Super Bowl? Bowl? But exactly. what about the Super Bowl? That's that so many millions of Americans worship. Yeah. Right? Many Christians come home from Sunday I was gonna to say. and watch football. <laughs> you know, and that's the thing, Shanti, like that hurts my heart too, because I know for a fact that God was the reason why I ended up in India. I know for a fact that God was with me the whole time that I was, I, I don't know if I ever shared this story back when I was on Facebook, like right before, like a, a, maybe a week or a few days, something like right before I was heading out to India for my first trip. And I was going to obviously be there for a very long time. So I was packing my apartment up had a lot of stuff out that I was taking with me and it was my first time going there. So I was obviously a little nervous and anxious and it was going to be a hard work. A lot, you know, obviously, you know, you're embarking on a big time shadow work. So that's nerve wracking as well, your own stuff. And I, this is back when I was on Facebook and this guy that I was friends with on Facebook that I went to high school with, I hadn't spoken to him since I was in high school. And I got this message on Facebook back when I used to check my message. I don't check message anymore because I got too many of them, but um, back, and, and he was like, Hey, it's, it's been like a long time. I hope you're well, but I just had to reach out to you. I don't know why, but I'm going to cry saying this. He said, I was, I, I was thinking about you. You popped into my head while I was praying and I heard the message to let you know that God is going to be with you. For whatever's going on in your life. He had no idea I was packing. I didn't packing up the heading to India. So riddle me that, Christians, who think I'm so sinful for spending, God was with me. I was there for a reason. And I, I don't know about you, Shanti, but I have had the most God-like experiences on, oh, yeah. I'm at four o'clock in the morning when I've got my yoga pants on backwards, my hair looks like Albert Einstein's hair, I'm sweating and I'm on the verge of tears and I got to put my leg behind my head one more time and I'm at that place of, of breaking, of vulnerability that's when I feel the peace of God. And that's, yeah. Patanjali talks about that in his sutras about that humility is what brings us into alignment with God. And that exactly. humility also comes a sense of peace. It's that humility, because when you, when, you, when you let ego go, you let everything that, that all that attachment, um, all that stuff that you hold on to, your makeup, your Lululemon outfits, your whatever it is, that's all ego-based stuff, you know? And um, at the end of the day, it's just, you know, when it's just you and God, that's the most beautiful the dog rule. Bowl. I mean, Amazing. that's my practice is in the kitchen with the dog bowl at four o'clock. Yeah. That, that's so true too, Shanti, because it's it's such a, um, you know, even I, I tell my students all the time, I'm like, pretty yoga practices are boring. I would so yeah. much rather see a, a sloppy yoga practice because that's what's interesting. And if your practice gets pretty. And that's falling pretty. around all over the place. Yeah. and like, <laughs> That's yeah. what's interesting. That is what's interesting. Some of my favorite yeah. students are my tightest students. Some of my favorite students. I have this one student, Shanti. He cracks me up. Every time we do something, he periodically will just stand up on his mat and just 
look up and it cracks me up. I was like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm just making sure God's still here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, God, are you here? <laughs> and he's sweating because he's so tight. And I just, I love it. And it cracks it. And he's got such a good attitude and he's in it for the right reasons. And I tell my students, when it when your practice gets pretty, it's time to crank it up because we got to dig a little deeper. We got to find where it's in. Yeah. And, uh -huh. you know, I just, um, so I know we're coming up on an hour, Shanti. Um, so I love the advice of just ignoring, um, holding your boundaries too. You just yeah, because. you know, honestly, Bryce. For me, there are times where I don't. There are times where I retaliate as well. I must say, yeah. but I will not engage them. I will absolutely not give them that satisfaction. I will not get them, give them the food of my energy on which to fodder, and. You know, they will, you know, it's really just whatever, you know. I mean, it's like, okay, well, you know, you did, you did a meme and you you really have very bad color, color coordination because I would never wear, wear purple and brown together ever. So can you please just get your color coordination right? Anyone who knows me knows I would never dress like that to begin with. So the joke's on you. <laughs> I've done that before. I've gotten a message where it says you're going to hell. You, you're possessive. Why are you are going to hell? And I will comment back and correct them with an asterisk. Yeah, I think Why are you a the re? I'll, I'll correct your grammar for you. You know, like I've done that before too. You know that, you know, and I've also, I, one of the things I've learned too, an old yoga friend taught me this. I, and I, you know, the, 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 I'm sorry you feel that way. Like putting it back on them, like, and I've said that before. I'm sorry you feel that way. And I hope someday that you find the peace of God that I found. Because if you had the peace of God in your life, you wouldn't feel the need to attack other people. Exactly. Who have an and you wouldn't feel the need to live a double life and to do dodgy things. I know. Um, that you need to hide behind closed doors. <laughs> Listen, I'm not living a double life. I, my boyfriend and I are probably... The, I mean, he look, he's covered in tattoos. He looks like he's a skateboarder. But listen, we are the boringest people <laughs> that you will ever meet. We sit at home all the time and just hang out with our dog, you know? So, And that's so cool. And that's yeah. a beautiful life. You're connected. You, you're it's, together. And you're happy. And that's what's amazing. Life. And we... Yeah, so it's exciting for you, you know. It's you, you know, you're doing the things that you enjoy. No, no and double life, no stress, no, no trying to hide <laughs> secrets. Nothing's hidden. Everything's out in the open. You know, um, I, I've yeah. I've also gotten that because we're not married, and I'm like, well, I don't need the government involved in my relationship. As far as I'm concerned, I'm in a monogamous relationship. We share everything. Exactly. So I don't need the government. To get spiritually, involved. you're more, you're more married than married people. Absolutely. That's what I must say. What I would, I would always say in when I was in my relationships and when I was really in my rest assured, I was very committed. Yes, absolutely. Um, so committed. Yes. We, we live as if we're married without the piece of paper. So in my opinion, that's just as valid as anybody else's marriage. We just don't have the government. More, more so. <laughs> yeah. We just Nothing's don't have forcing me to stay with you, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So anyway, Shanti, well, I appreciate this. Maybe I, I would love to hear from our um, viewers, our friends watching, especially our friends who are those really kind, loving Christians that we love so much. I know that the behavior of the bad Christians pisses you guys off too, because it makes you, I know it may, I, I've got yeah, it. Gives you, it gives too. you a bad rep. Yeah. So I would love to hear you guys, like from our, from our Christians who are very loving and open-minded and kind and really live the teachings of Christ. I would love to hear your suggestions. Like, how do you deal yeah. with the ones that aren't so nice? And for the non-Christians, the people, because I know I get a lot of people who have also been persecuted by this group. And so um, how have you dealt with it? How have you learned to put your boundaries up? I'd love to hear that in the comment section as well. Maybe we can go back and revisit some of the comments and, and some people's stories. And um, I would love to hear about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. We love you guys. And again, I want to reiterate for the people out there that have been so supportive of both Shanti and myself and Jesse and a lot of our friends, uh, Catherine, Tamara, um, for the people who have stuck with us and have really been open-minded and loving 
and interested in what we have to say and interested in the topics that we talk about. Thank you. Your support means the world to right. us. Exactly. Um, Dragonfly is in my head right now because she's always, mm. always there. And Dragonfly is yes, always, uh, <laughs> she, yeah, always in the chats. There's yes. a lot of them. And I love the it. You, yeah. And there's so many of you guys. I know my, my my missing names right now, but you guys, your presence, even though we've never Carol met. Carol Custer is another one. Yes. Yeah. Um, Lisa That's D. Um, Lisa, I think, uh, Jess, Jessica or Jesse. Uh, we have Lisa so many. Murray. Uh, yeah, Scotty, the guy from Australia. <laughs> I, love <Sorry>. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah. It, there's so many, there's too many to name, but even though we've never met you guys in person and we're the ones on camera and you're in the chat, please know that we recognize you and it, it just may, it makes me want to cry right now. Your support and your open-mindedness and your love and your engaging with us in these, I'm getting emotional and engaging. You guys mean the world to me, especially. I appreciate you your kindness and your love and the fact that even if you're a Christian or not, that you act in that Christ consciousness and it's yeah, funny too. Good. They all have a sense of humor, especially when we start talking about the 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 willies. <laughs> the wieners. <laughs> the wieners. So I appreciate you guys so much. <laughs> you're hysterical and you're kind and and please, please know that your presence in our lives means the world to us. So thank you guys and thank you, Shanti. Indeed. I love you dearly. And um Likewise, yeah. babe. Likewise. And thank you again. And I, I, Bryce, I have to actually echo you on that. You know, um, I so appreciate the viewers that support us. You know, you will see they follow us around mm -hmm. and always commenting, making us feel like we're the bee's knees. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's so appreciative. And really, it's, it's lots of fun having you guys on this journey with us. So thank you and God bless you as well. Thank you yeah, so much. We love you all. God bless you all. Be 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 the, the change you want to see in the world. Be that representation of what you want to see in the world. So as Ram Dass says, we're all just walking each other home. So we love you guys. I will put all of Shanti's links down in the description box below. So if for some reason you've never seen this beautiful lady before and you're like, what channels does she have? She's got two channels. <laughs> so I will put it down in the description box below. And, um, and yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a beautiful day day, week. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>